First paper is um, efficacy of uh, conservative treatment of adults and idiopathic scoliosis in growth um, results respecting SRS and social criteria, presented by Stefano Negrini. I will take some time more in the first presentation and I will save it in the other two because the methodology is exactly the same. Thank you. Uh, in this presentation, we will discuss the results according to the SRS criteria, basing the study on SOSORT management criteria. Up to now, we have just uh, presented the Cochrane Systematic Review that is now under review about bracing. There are two st serious studies on braces, one already uh, presented by Dr. Dolan, the Nathanson study, and one randomized control study that is not at the end of growth, 40 months result comparing TLSO versus spinal cord. But there are also serious case series uh, according to the SRS criteria presenting results in terms of number of patients that progressed more than six degrees, number of patients that finished treatment over 45 degrees, and number of patients fused. And the Yaniki study presented an 80% of patients fused with a TLSO and 60% with the Providence nine-time brace, while the spinal cord brace presented and published in the literature, 22% uh, of patients fused and 18% in the paper that will be presented afterwards in this, own, this same meeting. Uh, the SRS gave us methodological criteria for bracing studies, mainly about inclusion and outcome criteria. While SOSORT, in the uh, last meeting developed and published in scoliosis this year, the management criteria of bracing treatment for clinical studies. The aim of the study is to combine all those criteria to see what are the results. Uh, this paper is retrospective, coming from everyday clinics. We looked at our prospective database, looking how many patients finished in our prospective database. We already have 22,000 evaluations made out of 6,000 patients. All the patients that at the start of the treatment had adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, age 10 years or older, Research test 0 to 2, COP degrees 20 to 35, no prior treatment, uh, to 35, not 45, there, there is a mistake, sorry. No prior treatment, less than one year's postmenarchial have been included. In fact, there is a double mistake, 25 to 40 degrees at inclusion. I'm, so, I'm really sorry for that, but uh, the data of the study are good. 48 patients, four were males. And you can see the distribution of the curves of each single patient in the study. Treatment was tailored individually. So we had two patients that were casted and two patients who had performed only exercises in this case series. While you can see the distribution of plastic bracing uh, in, uh, in terms of hour of bracing at start. We use these braces, the cast, the lion brace, uh, the, the Sibylla Chino brace, and the Sforzesco brace. <laughs> According to the questionnaire published with the SOSORT criteria, we respected 43 out of 44 criteria. The professional team was complete. Medical doctors, orthotists, and physiotherapists respected the criteria. A part one that was not applicable to our reality. Here are the outcomes and statistics applied. We had 4.2 years of treatment on average and the compliance rate uh, not <coughs> monitored anyway apart from asking to the patients and to the parents and asking them what they are doing really. So it is for sure over what is the real compliance rate, but the compliance rate was very high. We did not add any patient over 45 degrees at the end of treatment, nor fused, 
nor a two years result. Among the uh, yellow lines, there is the start of the patients. We had two patients worsened 4% of the group and 25 improved more than five degrees, 56% of the group. Add the thoracic curve, range 25, 30 degrees at start, research zero. One was braced 23 hours per day and one was braced 21 hours per day at start. Example of results, Paola, Carlo, Fabiola, Uh, how does these results compare to the literature? The Yaniki paper is retrospective as is ours. Uh, the fused number of patients is very great, very big in that study. Perhaps this is, it is dependent on the settings. It is possible that we lose the surgical patients while they lose the patients that are going well. This is a possibility. Uh, dropouts always are a challenge, and we cannot control this in a retrospective paper. But also we had a very high compliance rate, and I think that the compliance rate respecting the SOSOT criteria could be one of the reasons of these results. Obviously, also type and quality of brace can play a role. The Coyard paper are prospective but the results included 7% of withdrawals that were not included. Uh, in, uh, they were just considered withdrawals. And we have to think that withdrawals from brace treatment doesn't mean automatically surgery. They are bad results, but this doesn't mean that those patients that we are not being able to treat will automatically go to surgery. So they should be considered by themselves apart. They are bad results, obviously. But we also know that they had a, a percentage of fused patients, 22%. The only randomized control trial existing in this field documented better results of rigid braces versus elastic brace. We personally use since two years the spinal cord brace, but we use it for the less important curves. And then we, have, we introduced a new step in our treatment for the less important cues between exercises and rigid braces, but we still continue to use rigid braces for the most important curves. So this can justify these results. So SOT criteria maximize compliance. Overall, spinal cord treatment is, com is quite comparable to the SOSOT criteria, and this could, be, could justify why with the spinal cord you obtain better results than with rigid braces. So I, I focus on that to justify these differences. We applied exercises together with bracing. This could, uh, could play a major role in the results beyond compliance, but uh, we have to, to check this. We have studies on that. This is the first study with SRS criteria in the literature, the first one respecting the SOSOT criteria. We applied individualized conservative treatment. This is a strength, but it is also a limitation. We do not speak of one single brace. We are speaking of a treatment. This respect everyday clinical reality. It is a retrospective. This is a limit. It is an efficacy analysis only. And uh, our conclusion is that uh, through good compliance and management, it is possible to avoid surgery in these patients to obtain improvements. Improvements are not con even considered in the SRS criteria but we all know that we can obtain improvements. And to have statistically significant stabilization of AIS, 4% of worsening, less than statistically significant in this study. Thank you very much.